Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over some garden decor and we're going to start with this little bird birdhouse. And I buy these wholesale and for some reason, reason this particular one doesn't sell that well. And so I think that it's probably the color. And so uh, I thought this would be a good item to add the uh, Dixie Bell patina paint on. So uh, I'm going to give this a good coat of uh, the color um, bronze. And um, one co coat covers it almost completely. Uh, but I need to put a second coat on it because um, you need to spray the patina spray on while uh while the item is while the paint is wet so um i give it this one good coat of uh the paint let that dry well and then uh and then go over it with a second coat and the second coat i didn't have to get full coverage on because uh, as i said this covered pretty well anyway uh, but then while that second coat is wet or was wet, I went ahead with the, um, with the green patina spray. Now they make a blue and green and yellow, but personally, I like the green better. The blue to me seems a little too blue and the yellow, I, I'm just not crazy about that either, but the green to me does a really good job and it ends up being kind of a bluish green so again once i get a, a coat on this and let it dry then i just went over it with another coat and just kind of a light coat and then sprayed the spray on it and because i'm going with a thin coat as my top coat here uh, I didn't want to take a chance on it drying, so I just painted small sections at a time and then sprayed. And that way, also, I could make sure that I got better even co coverage. And it's easy to get too much on. You don't want it dripping because those drips will show. So I just like to very, very lightly mist it. And then uh, once I got the patina look that I wanted and uh, let that dry well, then I sprayed this with a clear sealer to, just to give it some extra protection. Now this next item is another item that I bought uh, as an import wholesale and um, it's rather plain so uh, the even the the wheels on it are just kind of an unfinished brown and so I did that same uh, metallic finish on the on the wheels and I've already done that at this point but now I want to, um, the inside is unfinished, so I wanted to paint it, and uh, I, I'm painting it with the Dixie Bell Color Sandbar. And um, because the outside is not very even, and a lot of times I like that kind of finish, but uh, I'm going to be adding a little bit of decoupage to this. So I wanted to uh, just do a good even coat of the sandbar on the inside and out. And then I had this napkin that I want to decoupage just a little on the corner of one side and the, cor and the opposite corner of the other because I just wanted a little something on each side 
I don't want to overdress this. So, um, I just tore one corner off and just kind of gave it a little, uh, kind of an organic look to, um, to add to that corner. And then, um, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So, it, on the other side, the, I'm going to do the opposite corner. And I'm not really even cutting this. I'm just going to put it on here with some Mod Podge and let that dry well. And then I'll just take my little finger sander and clean up those edges. And that will uh, cut off that bottom part that I don't want. And I also didn't want to leave the inside of this just uh, plain. So I'm going to, um, I had some rice paper that um, I'm tr I've am i been trying to think of where I got this. I think it might have been gifted to me. Uh, I will try to find at least something similar if, if I can to link in the description. But I like that this crackle finish uh, has that same color of brown that's in my napkin. So it's going to kind of bring that out. So what I do is uh, I cut one solid piece that will fit on both of the long sides and the bottom. And then I will just piece those short sides and, um, and finish the whole inside of this. And I like the way that that brought that together with the outside better. And again, um, I'm not worrying about cutting it perfectly uh, because once it's dry, then I can take that sander, the little finger sander, and clean up those edges. Now, I do cut this excess away somewhat, but um, but uh, this is a good solid, uh, good sturdy rice paper. And... Uh, because of it, it's a, it takes a little bit more glue to hold this in, but it's going to be a good durable inside. Um, but it is a little bit harder to uh, put on. But rice paper is wonderful. Here I'm having to add some more glue. Um, rice paper is wonderful at uh, not showing the wrinkles because it's very porous, so it lets the air out and doesn't trap air underneath and cause bubbles or extra wrinkles. So it's a, it's a good um, material to work with. And then I'll just cut this excess off, and then once it dries well, then I'll sand it and make it really uh, even. And then on the sides, uh, I'm going to take part of this stencil and um, I will look this one up and see if I can find it and add it in the description. It's one that I've had for some time, but uh, I'm just going to put part of this on the fresh cut flowers on the side. And I'm doing this with some brown stays on ink. So I do that on both sides. And then um, I took that stays on ink pad in the color um, chocolate brown, I think, and went around the edges to add some uh, distress to this to kind of bring it together with the inside. Now this next one is just a little metal compote um, planner, I guess, and uh, I wanted to uh, add that same metallic finish to this, and that will just make it look like a bronze um, compote. So obviously I'm using the same technique, I just put one full coat on and then let that dry well and then do a light coat and spray my patina spray on.
So I had another um, import item that I bought, and when it came, it was very cheap. Uh, it was actually a wooden window, and but the window was very plain, and my friend Gretchen sent me uh, her frame mold. She said she had an extra one, and uh, this is the IOD frame mold, and I absolutely love this, and I thought it was so sweet of Gretchen to, to give this to me. And uh, I have a technique that I'm going to be doing with this in a video soon, but uh, for today, what I wanted to do was just make some molds for the corner. And I'm taking this larger frame, and I just put some hot glue in just the corner part of it. And it gave me a good stopping point to just do the corners. So uh, I'm going to be gluing these molds on the corners of the frame and then painting it. And as I said, this one is very cheap made, so I hope this is enough to make it sell. I had already put a little hook in it so that I could add a wreath, uh, but um, once I glued these on, then, um, then I gave this uh, one coat of the color. Um, actually, I think I used cotton on this. And... Um, and then I just used my gray stamp pad to just rub over some of the high spots and these molds in the corner to add some uh, extra um, character to it. And then maybe that will be enough to sell this. Now, I thrifted these two birds, and they were actually the color aluminum. Uh, they were just um, just an aluminum color, not very attractive at all. So, what I did was uh, took these outside and uh, sprayed them with some black spray paint. And I just used a matte black spray paint, and I didn't even worry with full coverage. I just made sure that I got some on the inside also because I didn't want any of that showing through. But um, a little bit of the aluminum color showing was fine with me because what I'm doing now is just brushing some Mod Podge all over them and sprinkling them with uh, cinnamon. And that's a good, quick, easy way to rust your items. And it adds texture and it just really looks like authentic rust. So I just kept kind of adding this on and sprinkling more of the, um, the cinnamon on. And again, I didn't worry about full coverage either here because very few items are completely rusted. It actually looks a little better to have some of this dark to show through. So um, once I got enough on it, and I should have used uh, something here to put this cinnamon in, and I could have uh, used it to, to dump some more out. So um, I did, sometimes I just get in a hurry and I don't do things the way I ought to. Uh, but uh, it helps if you do it over a plate or something. That way you can reuse your cinnamon. So I did this with both of them. And, um, and then once this dried well, then I just took them outside and uh, painted them with a clear matte spray to seal in all this rust so that none of this loose rust would come off or loose cinnamon. Uh, but it really does create a really pretty look.
Now this is another import item that I get and um, this is how it comes. Um, the one thing that it's missing is a hanger because how do you use this without maybe hanging it on a fence or something like that. I love the shape of it. I love uh, the wood that it's made from but I will be adding a hanger to the other side and also they're just very plain. Uh, I have sold several of these just plain, but I've always thought that maybe I should paint them or do some kind of finish on them. So I have a set of these textured stencils and I'll add these in the description because I use them all the time. And uh, it just has uh, some sort of design. Some of the designs are real fine like this one and then some of them uh, are not so fine and I use them for so many things but what I use them for most is to uh, stencil um, joint compound on and that just gives you uh, somewhat of a raised design and I don't even worry that this is not large enough to cover my whole item and I have to kind of piece it um, and even uh, piece it while it's still wet doesn't really bother me. I'm just a little bit careful with that. Uh, but I don't worry about full coverage on this because I actually really like to see some of that original color coming through. It just gives it a really distressed, pretty look. And uh, this is what I should have done to these wings all together because, or from the beginning actually, because. Um, it really gives them a delicate wing-like look and um, it's I feel like this is making all the difference and so I ended up going uh, getting all of my I think I had seven of these left and I, I did all of them and it honestly it maybe took me um, just minutes to do all of them of course you've got to let it dry uh, and then once it dries, then I sand around the edges uh, to clean them up good. So I actually need to let this dry overnight because the joint compound takes a little while since it is thicker. So once this is dry, uh, then uh, I will be going around it with my little finger sander and cleaning up those edges. And then I wanted the body of this because I, when I think of dragonflies, uh, I think of green, the color green. They just have this um, a real pretty color of green, I think. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be painting on the body. And the color that I chose is English Ivy, and that's a Dixie Belle color. And I think it turned out to be the perfect color for this. Uh, and I don't want full coverage. Uh, I'm intentionally letting some of that wood show through. So this is more like a dry brush than a paint. And uh, I really like the way this turned out. And again, once this dries, I also take my little finger sander and go around all the edges. And then, uh, once the whole thing is dry, and again, I let those wings dry overnight to make sure that they were really dry. And then uh, I finished this off with a clear coat and added a little hanger to the back. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, 
and God bless you and your family.